I'm Tony Fastadder. I'm Tony Fastadder. I'm Tony Fastadder. My family has been blessed to farm in Montana for over 100 years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, you guys have been asking about some videos about the iron worker, which is perfect because I just got a bunch of tooling from Cleveland Punch and Die Company. So a bunch of new, not wore out or damaged, top and bottom dies as well as some squares, ovals, stuff like that I'll show you. And we have to be working on rebuilding the uh, nibbler that goes on the side here. We got the nibbler sides pulled off. Top die is still on the machinery. Get that pulled off here quick. What happened is one of these uh, Allen wrenches got laid down there and someone was working on the other side and this got set in here, got cut off and it damaged the die. So we gotta replace the top die. That happened a long time ago. Just been dealing with a little bit of a rough cut with it ever since and ordering the dies, I ordered a new top and bottom piece. Bottom pieces can be turned, I didn't realize that. So we got a spare around for now. But the top die, we're gonna take that apart now. Didn't realize I had to pull like the whole thing off to get to the top die, but. So Colin already pulled this die out and turned it around before we took it off. But see that nick there? That was on the other side. And that is what that uh, Allen wrench got stuck into. There's also a little nick right there and on that other side. So we're gonna turn these ones over too while we have it apart. Oh, that was tight. Bet you they have a guy named Tony at the factory too. Well, I did have to like pick one foot up off the ground to really, really reef on it. Aww. Yeah, that's a one, one use, one way thing. They sent the wrong part. Looks like the holes line up good, would work. The rest of the shape is right, but we need a key groove on the top instead of a pan. Because. That's where it goes, and that's got the groove in it. Well, when I bought that machine back when we were welding, building hopper bottoms, which eventually we'll talk about that more, I got it with six, seven sets of dies, and the three over there, they're damaged ones. So these ones were ordered in bolt sizes. I got a quarter inch, three quarter, the three eighths, half inch, those ones are damaged. But I didn't think about didn't know any better, did it order them oversized. So now this time, these new ones, like this is a quarter inch bolt. It is a 932nd top guy. So I'll be able to not have to do any reaming. Everything should have a little more space when we're putting it together. We also got these squares that have a keyway in them. This is the top die, bottom die. The bottom die has a spot for a set screw there to hold on my thumb. So we get that straight, key away from the top to get that straight. Because if this thing comes down, not square, it's game over. Five squares, three ovals, and then one, two, three, four, five, six round ones. Top die and a bottom die is a thousand dollars. So we gotta be careful. Right, Colin? Mm -hmm. We gotta be careful. So we're gonna give this a shot. I'm gonna put the three eighths die in for the bottom. It's actually bigger than three eighths, but that's beside the point. Put that in, and then we put the hold down plate in next. That's what's gonna keep the metal, push the metal off of the die if it sticks. Top die is in the holder. This is a quick change, so this might take two hands. Maybe. There we go. So that just drops in and turns an eighth of a turn or a quarter turn and locks in. We turn this in. We get that tight. I'm gonna make sure everything is good and snug so we don't damage the die. Here's the wrench. Snug this up so nothing moves. Okay, I'm gonna do a test and watch this now. Turn it on. Make sure everything is clear. This does not have, the die won't bother that. Nothing's in there. We put this thing back on. Snug that, okay, I'm gonna go real slow down. Just make sure that that die, it goes through the hole there. Got clearance. 
Okay, we're good. We're gonna try punching a hole now. So I got a piece of 3 16 here. This is actually from the wheelchair project. All right, here we go. There we go, we got a hole. Now, I'm gonna go grab a three inch bolt and we'll see if that fits. All right, Colin, hold this, would you? So there's a bolt, hole, bolt, three inch bin bolt, just a little bit of play. Everything will bolt up real nice. It's a really clean hole. It is a really clean hole. No, no, no tearing or nothing, no berm, berm, no burr, burr, burr. They're burrs. You know what I'm talking about half the time, don't worry. We got some key stocks cut. Colin's working on a few more. I'm going to put this together and cut a square hole because I think that's going to be kind of cool. Now it is super critical that we get this bottom die in square and the set screw tightened up on it. So, tighten this up on the side. Helps if I have the right size, I suppose, huh? Yep. Oh yeah, that one fits better. We'll put this back on. We're just double checking some stuff in there. Hold down goes back in. All right, time to check it here. It's lighting it. We need way better light in our shop, that's for sure. Yeah, that looks... Looks off to me, so a right, little adjustment. Let's check it here again. Well, that is a tight tolerance. Let's give this one a try. And we got ourselves a square hole. It's pretty cool. I love tools. <laughs> That's gonna be so nice. Now for an oval. Boy, we can build anything we want now. Yeah. Between a lathe, iron worker, welder, and the press. So if you need to build anything with a little adjustment to it, be able to do a slotted hole. Slide that back and forth, tighten it up. Any square holes for carriage heads. Well, I want to show you guys what all the rest of these shearing pieces are for. Uh, we can stick angle iron in this one, round stock, square stock, or flat stock. A lot of times we were building hoppers, we would take our angle irons that we needed to cut for our access doors, and we'd have a stop set in the back, and you'd just take a stick in there and cut, 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 cut. Bring them around to this other side and notch them, notch them one leg off the angle iron. Right, don't take this round stock. It's I, don't ask me what's happening. I think this is pre lathe time, trying to spin something down on a grinder. <laughs> Any other ideas, Colin? I don't. So it looks like to me. <laughs> Anyways, so these, this is your hold down part. I'm gonna slip this through, line it up with the back hole, and that's gonna you want to get this kind of tight in here so it can't move. Okay, there it's already cut. Go we'll find that piece. There you go, it just shears that right off. And the same thing goes with the square stock. Shove this all the way through. Tighten it down so doesn't tweak it. Usually I like to have it so it's just loose. Just that easy. That is sweet. That's so nice.
So these are set to one set to 90. This one can be set wherever. It's got some nice guidelines for 22 and a half and 45 degree angles. Same thing kind of goes with this. Slip it in there. Keep it just so it's not super loose. It'll, if it lifts a little bit, that's fine. That's quarter inch strap iron. Just clean cut. Simple as that. Simple as that. All right, since we're showing you how this all works, we decided to put the die back together the way it was for this uh, nibbler, I think they call it, or notcher. I'm gonna notch this piece of angle iron and show you what I really mean. Got that one leg out. Put this in there. You weld it corner to corner. Sure, a lot easier than cutting 45s on a bandsaw or a chop saw or anything like that. Super quick. Set up some folders and stuff. Push it up. Punch stuff out. That is way cool. And then if you just want to notch the side out. Woo. You'll cut out notches like that. Usually, not just formed like that though. <laughs> That's an iron worker. It's a Spartan IW50S. It's a 50 ton power, I guess, to push. I, I guess that's how they rate them. And I just looked online. They're now they retail for about six grand. I don't think I paid that. I think it was in the closer to five grand, but I've had it since, oh man, it's been over 10 years, 12, 12 years probably since I bought it. Uh, very nice machine. Definitely would recommend them. Having one, if you like to do a lot of fabricating in the shop, there are some few other options. Some of them have like a shear on the side or a press break in the middle, like the press like that die on the bottom of that. Lots of other options you can get on them. So this one, let's see, I think I had this first and then we bought that machine when we were welding. So yeah, it's uh, definitely a really nice shop tool, a little spendy. We use it, anything Colin, almost every day if we're working in the shop for some sort of fabricating. Oh yeah, every, probably every time. Pretty close to every day. If the welder's running, this thing's probably gonna get used. I'll show you guys how this thing works too. Well, I got an idea. This toolbox needs a little angle iron bracket made off the side here so that I can store my big pry bars on it. Now, Found this piece of looks like 10 gauge. I'm gonna punch holes in it and then bend it so I can screw it onto the side of the toolbox here and hold those pry bars. I'll show you how I set a backstop up on here. There's no mechanical one, I just built some stops to put on there so I can set this down, shove it up against it, and make the bend. Up here, have all these different numbers. So I got 3 16 and 8 inch plate, 10 gauge, 12 gauge, all my dimensions for 90 and 45 degrees. And then these are those numbers that match up with this. So if I have a piece of 10 gauge, I want a 45 degree angle, it's 14.53. So I would run this thing down. So instead of saying 14.99, I'd say 14.53. That adjusts how far down the top die goes into the bottom die. Once that cam makes its cycle all the way through, this mechanical one will go down and back up, as long as you're holding onto the pedal. So, let's do a little layout on this. Figure out what I need to do. Punch holes in it, and build something. All right, time to punch some holes in here. Tricky part is getting this thing centered up. There we go. So these are the screws that are gonna mount it to the toolbox. There we go. Now, change the die out. 
Bam! So this press was actually an eBay buy back in probably 08, 09, somewhere back there when we were building hoppers. I needed a break to bend the aeration troughs and we built them. They were kind of like a roof shape, a house shape. 12 inch side, 18 inch 45, another 18 inch 45 down here and 12 inch on the side. Air would blow into that tube, that trough, we call it an air trough. Air would blow up into that trough and it would come down underneath and go up out to the top of the bin because the bin led to be open. So that's what we needed this for. We also bent the traps that are on the bottom of the hopper, the rack and pinion. That's how we open them up. They're built a lot like uh, bottom of the grain trailer. Uh, we had to bend the three sides. So we stick them in here, bend the three sides, weld the corners. Use this thing a ton when we were building hoppers. Um, bending capacity on here says it's an eight foot by 10 gauge. Well, well we bent 10 foot by 10 gauge all the time, both those 45s and 90s. It's pretty cool, use it a lot. Used to use it a lot, still use it some. All right, let's turn the press on. Like a small jet engine taking off. It does sound like a small jet engine taking off. All right, so that's running. It has a brake up there that it squeezes. And that's what runs the press up and down. So if you look over here, we've got a red line. You can see that in there. That is top dead center. So we want to get that up. So then we know if we just need to work it down slowly, we can just drop it down a little bit and check our location. So our plan is we're gonna go 10 gauge, 90 degrees. So we have to take this number down to 14, 115, which could take a little bit. We gotta help with it. Yep. Zero, zero at the end. Yeah, go down to the bottom of 200s. Well, you're past it. You're way past it. Okay, that's still fine because we're still above this number. You want to double check. The plate's got all the holes punched in it. And I want to punch it so that the smooth side is up. So I'm going to put it in upside down. We have this backstop set in here. The strap iron is clamped. I'm gonna set this underneath there, push the pedal. Magic. Magic, and we did go, good thing we stopped early, Aaliyah, because we're even past 90 already. So now how do you think we fix that? Any idea? Reverse. Reverse it. Normally if it's longer, we can stick it in here like this, but it's too short to catch it aside, the side and then we can straighten it out, but this, small piece we'll just put it in the press or in the vise and pull it back a little bit so this piece of metal is obviously a little thicker than 10 gauge 3 16 maybe i don't think it's quite that thick anyways we'll straighten it out get ready to bolt on that was spraying a moving target <laughs> a little tricky mm, yeah <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's even gonna work. Victory. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you have any more you want in there? Victory! <laughs> Victory, she says. Well, there we go. Now I got a place to hang my pry bars. Mm. And your lights. Oh, well, there you go, Leah. Good thinking. So I put those extra holes in there. <laughs> Now, if I could just build something that would clean my shop for me. Well, I know. 45 degree angle. I keep my toolbox clean on top. <laughs> no, this is not a paid advertisement. I actually bought these ones. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget. Farm high, pay harder. That's right. See you guys next video.